Windows 11 has released some updates in October 2022, which have a few productivity features that I find valuable as a content creator. Today I'll share those with you in a quick tutorial. First is a feature I'm really excited about. As a user of multiple displays, I often find my mouse cursor gets stuck when I move from one display to another. I do this a lot throughout the day. A new option in the display settings called Ease Cursor Movement can greatly reduce the cursor getting stuck when moving between displays. Just look at the difference it makes when I go across all four of these displays, which are different resolutions, orientations, and distributed differently. It was such a chore to get over to the fourth display. Now with Ease Cursor Movement, it's as smooth as silk. Getting a clear pathway for the flow may require you to set up an optimal arrangement in the display options. Be sure to match your physical layout as closely as possible while reducing gaps or cliffs where there should be a bridge between displays. Even dragging windows to different displays is much smoother. I love this. Unfortunately, there is a downside. This mode can cause the cursor to jump to a different position when hovering near the edges of a display boundary. For example, when I use the scroll bars on the right side. As you can see, the cursor jumps as you are scrolling down, causing the page to repeatedly move back up. If only Microsoft had left the scroll bars wide rather than making them thin, I wouldn't be as likely to stray over the edge. This really makes it frustrating to use a web browser when it doesn't need to be. Overall, I spend more time getting stuck moving between displays than I do getting frustrated with the browser window, so I will keep using this feature but I do hope Microsoft recognizes this is a bug and fixes it soon. Next, we will check out the new Snap Layouts bar. I have been really enjoying Snap Layouts. They allow me to snap multiple folders of windows to various arrangements like 2-up or 4-up. I often work with collections of folders, so snapping is quite useful. However, I found it was difficult to place windows into the snapping mode. Now when you drag a window, a horizontal bar appears at the top of the display, and when you hover over it, the various snapping zones appear. Simply release the window in the zone you want, and it goes there. This makes snapping a lot easier to use, and now I will be enjoying it even more. Another feature that I had hoped would increase my productivity is the update to the File Explorer, which can now open folders in a tabbed mode. Rather than keeping a bunch of windows open at the same time, it is possible to save space and navigate more easily by combining several windows into one. I already do this a lot with a web browser, so this is a feature I've been wanting for some time. Unfortunately, this feature is either buggy or not well thought out, because most of the time folders open as individual windows, even if I right click and choose open in new tab. Changing the folder options to open in the same window seems to get the tabs working somewhat, but I don't want to work with only a single window. What I would expect is that opening a window in a tab should also be possible when opening folders in their own window. It would also be useful to drag and drop folders to dock them into the tabbed area. Hopefully this feature gets another revision in a future update. Until then, I can't see I'll use it much. A small but very noticeable change is to the appearance of the folder icons. The medium, large, and extra large modes now show a preview thumbnail of the contents tucked inside. While the preview area is not large enough to fit the entire image, it can in some cases give you an idea of what is in the folder without having to open it. Unfortunately, you cannot control which image is shown, so the preview image chosen from the folder varies. The selected image for the thumbnail may not represent what is in the folder, or you might get a file icon in place of an image. And if you choose a custom icon for the folder, the auto-generated one will be replaced. Although it's not perfect, I think it's far better than seeing a bunch of blank folders, especially for those of us who are working with art, photography, or graphics. Moving on to the next feature, there are some new touch gestures. You can swipe with one finger from the bottom upward to show the Start menu. This is very handy because I can open the Start menu on my Cintiq rather than having to move my mouse over to the taskbar or use the Windows key. Next, you can swipe from the right corner to show the Quick Settings and the Calendar. Tap anywhere to close it. A three-finger swipe vertically down the middle will minimize all apps. Reverse that gesture to bring everything back. A horizontal four-finger swipe will switch between your desktops. This can be a handy way to manage multiple apps or workflows at once. The animations are very smooth and respond nicely to touch input. 
It's worth noting that if you're using a Wacom tablet, you may need to change your touch preferences to Windows rather than Wacom for the gestures to work. The final feature in the Windows 11 October updates I want to talk about is the new ClipChamp video editor. This is a free video editing app that looks quite promising. Although even with the paid upgrades, I doubt it's going to be on the same level as Premiere Pro or anything like that, but it could be more than adequate for making simple videos to share on social media. I plan to review ClipChamp in a separate video, so subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss that. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and stay creative.